from Swiss Watch Expo, the ultimate guide to the Rolex Submariner. The Rolex Submariner is considered the watch to own. While it was created for divers, its combination of high functionality and striking yet timeless design has earned fans beyond the sport. In fact, it can be reasonably described with various superlatives. It's the most important, most emulated, and most iconic sports watch of all time. The Rolex Submariner turns 70 this year, and it's still one of Rolex's most popular models, a pop culture symbol in its own right. Ready to get your very own Rolex Submariner? Let's take a deep dive into its history with Swiss Watch Expo's ultimate guide. Subscribe to our channel to get updates on new videos. A brief history of the Rolex Submariner. Given the popularity and long history of the Rolex Submariner, you could be forgiven for thinking that it was the very first dive watch Rolex ever made, but it wasn't. As far back as 1926, Rolex had already created the world's first water-resistant and dust-proof timepiece, aptly named the Oyster. Rolex founder Hans Wilsdorf was bent on creating a case to protect the delicate watch movement from water and dust. The solution they came up with was a hermetical seal one that screws down the bezel and the case back against the middle case to create a watertight enclosure. In November 1927, a young British secretary named Mercedes Gleitz would help prove the abilities of the Oyster Watch. To pursue a long-distance swimming career, Mercedes attempted to become the first woman to swim the English Channel. When she successfully crossed the channel for her sixth attempt, she had with her an Oyster Watch. The watch was in perfect working order at the end of the 15-hour, 15-minute swim, proving its extraordinary water resistance. Following the launch of the Oyster, it became Rolex's ethos to create reliable timepieces for man's every pursuit. Beginning in the 1950s, the brand introduced a range of tool watches, designed not only to tell time, but to accompany its wear even in the most extreme conditions. In quick succession, Rolex unveiled what would be their most iconic timepieces, the Turnograph, the Datejust, the Explorer, the Milgauss, the GMT Master, and the Daydate, names that are immediately recognizable even today. As professional deep sea diving and scientific exploration of the seas began to flourish, the company created a diving watch that was not just waterproof, but also elegant enough to be worn every day, the Rolex Submariner. Even 70 years on, it's still undoubtedly Rolex's greatest triumph. Here are the key milestones in the history of the Rolex Submariner. 1926, Rolex creates the world's first waterproof and dustproof watch called the Oyster. 1930s, Rolex develops machinery to test the waterproofness of their watches. 1940s, scuba diving begins to gain popularity as a sport. 1953, Rolex introduces the Submariner. The professional diver's watch was equipped with an automatic movement and a water resistance of 100 meters or 330 feet, the first diving watch to achieve this depth rating. 1959, Rolex increases the 37 millimeter case size to 40 millimeters and crown guards were added. The Rolex Submariner will remain the same size until 2020. 1962, James Bond wears a Rolex Submariner. Sean Connery was the first ever actor to play Agent 007 in the film Dr. No. He wore a reference 6538 Big Crown Rolex Submariner, which has become more popularly known as the James Bond Submariner. The sub would appear in different movies of the franchise until 1989. 1967, the Rolex Submariner sees a number of design changes, such as the change from radium to tritium luminescence, and variations of matte dials with black text and gilt gloss dials. 1969, Rolex introduces the date complication, which is displayed through an aperture at 3 o'clock. The first gold Submariner is also introduced. It was at this point that the Rolex Submariner began its transition from a utilitarian timepiece to a status symbol. 1979, three innovations were introduced that we still see in the Rolex Submariner line today the switch from acrylic crystal to scratch-resistant sapphire crystals, from bi-directional to unidirectional rotating bezels, and lastly, improved water resistance to 300 meters from 100 meters. 1984, 
Rolex replaces the Submariner's matte dials to gloss dials with white gold markers. They also launched the first two-tone steel and gold Submariner model. 1988, the Rolex Submariner's construction is changed from standard 316L to stronger 904L stainless steel. It's also fitted with the caliber 3135, largely considered as one of Rolex's best movements. 2003, now set firmly as the most popular and iconic dive watch, Rolex celebrates the Submariner's 50th anniversary. To celebrate this milestone, they introduced the first Rolex Submariner with a green bezel, the Kermit 16610LV. This was also the first time that the color green was used on any of their dive watches. The new color was introduced along with the super case and maxi dial design, which gives the Submariner more presence on the wrist. The Kermit will be followed by two more green Submariners, the Hulk in 2010 and the Starbucks in 2020. 2010, the patented Cerachrome bezel is introduced to the Submariner date with the launch of the Rolex Hulk. It also became the first time that a Submariner model is given a green dial and a green bezel. 2012, the Rolex Submariner non-date is upgraded with the Cerachrome bezel. 2020, a new range of Rolex Submariner models is introduced, this time with a 41mm case diameter. The lugs have been made longer and slimmer and the crown guards are thinner, giving it a more tapered profile despite the larger case. Its profile is more reminiscent of pre-supercase models. The Submariner now also has the caliber 3235 with 70 hours of power reserve and accuracy of plus two minus two seconds per day. Key features of the Rolex Submariner. Rolex is famous for the slow evolution of its watch designs. The Rolex Submariner is one of the least visually altered models in the brand's history, and it has defined nearly all the fundamental physical elements that we see in dive watches today. Here are key features of the Rolex Submariner that can be seen across all references. The waterproof oyster case. Invented by Rolex in 1926, the Oyster case was the world's first waterproof wristwatch case. This feat is thanks to Rolex's patented system of hermetically screwing the winding crown, bezel, and case back directly against the middle case. The Rolex Submariner case was initially 37 mm and became 40 mm in 1959. It would stay that way for the next 60 years, and 40 mm would be considered the standard size for Rolex sport watches. In 2020, for the very first time, Rolex increased the Submariner's case, so the current collection now measures 41 millimeters. The 60-minute bezel. The Rolex Submariner bezel has always featured 60-minute graduations and a distinct arrow marker at the 12 o'clock position. The first Rolex Submariner models featured a bi-directional rotating bezel. The patent for the unidirectional rotating bezel was owned by Blancpain makers of the 50 Fathoms dive watch until 1983, so every Submariner had bezels that turned both ways until then. The bezels were later improved into unidirectional bezels that can only move forward. This proved helpful in avoiding the overestimation of immersion time. Luminous hour markers. When diving, being able to read the time with absolute certainty is non-negotiable. To achieve this, dive watches are always equipped with luminous markers and hands which makes time easily readable, even under murky waters. The first type of luminescence used on the Rolex Submariner was radium. It remained the standard luminous material for Rolex until 1963, but was phased out when its toxic effects became more understood. It was then replaced by tritium. While tritium is safer than radium, it was still radioactive, so Rolex indicated the level of radioactivity emitted by the watch on its dial. These are indicated by the text T Swiss T or Swiss T25 at 6 o'clock. Rolex continued its search for safe luminous materials, but the answer would not come until 1998, when Japanese company called Nimoto & Company, which specialized in luminous paint, introduced the Luminova. The new material was photoluminescent rather than radioactive, making it completely safe for use. Moreover, its glow is charged by being exposed to light making it less prone to fading compared to tritium. In the 2000s, Rolex quickly upgraded to the Superluminova, a Swiss-made version of the Luminova. 
and in 2008, Rolex introduced their proprietary loom called Chromalite. Its glow lasts up to eight hours, and it also glows blue in the dark, making it easier to read in low light situations. And finally, the Oyster Bracelet. The Rolex Submariner has always been equipped with the three-link Oyster Bracelet. The Oyster is considered the sportiest of all Rolex bracelets and is used on the entire professional line. The Oyster Bracelet used on the Submariner is paired with the Oyster Lock Safety Clasp, which secures the bracelet onto the wrist and prevents accidental opening. In the 2010s, Rolex Submariners were updated with the Glide Lock Extension System, which allows the wearer to extend the bracelet in two millimeter increments for a total extension of up to 20 millimeters. This feature allows for the watch to be worn comfortably over a wetsuit. Generations of the Rolex Submariner. In true Rolex fashion, the Submariner has only been slowly and gently revised since its launch 70 years ago. Despite the decades-long gap between each generation, they can still be easily recognized as Rolex Submariners, a testament to its timeless design. Rolex has made subtle but significant improvements in the Submariner's materials and technology over the decades. Let's trace the evolution of the Rolex Submariner and the introduction of key features to the collection. 1953 to 1962, the era of 37 mm cases without crown guards. The earliest Rolex Submariners were made of stainless steel cases measuring 37 mm. In the first five years of the Submariner, Rolex was constantly improving on the design, resulting in a total of eight models in a short span of time. These models can have either 100 meter or 200 meter water resistance, pencil style hands, or the now standard Mercedes handset. Rolex also experimented with different crown sizes, ranging from five to seven millimeter small crowns or the eight millimeter Brevet big crown. All these models feature gilt dials with golden text, acrylic crystals, and bi-directional rotating aluminum bezels. During this time, Rolex was still experimenting heavily with the new watch, so they released version after version of the Submariner, a number of which were available concurrently. Doing so paid off as it clearly helped the Submariner find its footing. 1959 to 1989, Rolex Submariners with 40 millimeter cases and crown guards. This generation of the Rolex Submariner embodies the design that we know today. The reference 5512 and 5513 have the 40 mm wide case, beveled lugs, crown guards, 200 meter depth rating, and the standard Mercedes hands. Rolex also introduced crown guards to keep the winding crown from going loose. These two references were produced for a very long time, the 5512 until 1980 and the 5513 until 1989, which saw a number of design changes among them was the change from radium luminescence to tritium in the mid-60s, and variations of matte dials with black text and gilt gloss dials. The main difference between the 5512 and the 5513 is that versions of the former became COSC certified. 1969 to 1979, Rolex introduces the date aperture. The Rolex Submariner reference 1680 marked the introduction of the date window at three o'clock. In addition to the date, it also featured the magnifying Cyclops window on the case. The earliest iterations of the 1680 also featured red Submariner writing on the dial, earning it the nickname Red Submariner. By 1977, Rolex changed the Submariner writing to white. In the same decade, Rolex introduced Submariners made in 18 karat gold. The Rolex Submariner reference 1680-8 was the first Submariner to come in solid 18 karat gold. This signaled the Submariner's evolution from a tool watch to a robust luxury watch. The first 1680-8 model came with a black aluminum bezel and dial, and eventually a blue version was also introduced. These feature nipple dial markers with slightly protruding shapes. From 1979 to 1999, Rolex Submariners began to be equipped with sapphire crystals and a unidirectional bezel. Rolex also increased their water resistance to 300 meters. 
In this decade, we also see the first Rolosaur Submariner. The Rolex Submariner 168 references introduced three design elements that we still see in the collection today. First is the switch from acrylic crystal to scratch-resistant sapphire crystals. They also switched from bidirectional to unidirectional rotating bezels that can only rotate counterclockwise, preventing any accidental manipulation underwater. Lastly, the Submariner's water resistance was also improved to 300 meters or 1,000 feet. The no-date Rolex Submariner 14060 was the last reference to receive the sapphire crystal, unidirectional rotating bezel, and 300 meter water resistance when it was launched in 1990. Rolex also unveiled the 16803, the first Rolex Submariner to come in a Rolosaur variant, or a combination of stainless steel and 18 karat yellow gold. 1988, Rolex begins using 904L steel. While it was only produced for a few months, the Rolex Submariner reference 168000 marked the introduction of 904L steel to the collection. Older Submariners were fashioned in industry standard 361L steel, but Rolex upgraded around 1985 because it takes a higher polish than other grades of steel and provides greater corrosion resistance. 1988 to 2012, Rolex powers the Submariner with a workhorse movement and new luminous material. We also see a surprising new colorway for its bezel. Rolex introduced the 3135 date and 3130 no date movements in 1988. These automatic movements are used in a large number of watches from Rolex and are now considered a base movement. They feature the parachrome hairspring which allows for greater resistance to shocks and temperature variations. The 166 references also marked the change from tritium markers to luminova and then superluminova markers. In 2003, Rolex also introduced the first green Submariner, the Rolex Kermit. This model commemorated the 50th anniversary of the Submariner model by introducing the first green aluminum bezel. 2010 to 2020, Rolex's modern era ushers in the ceramic bezel and supercase. The six-digit Rolex Submariner references signal the introduction of the maxi dial, supercase, and the Cerachrome ceramic bezel to the line. The case remained at 40 millimeters, but featured broader and squarer lugs and wider crown guards that give it a beefier look. The dial is also more legible with larger loom plots and hands. Meanwhile, the bezel was upgraded to Rolex's patented Cerachrome ceramic insert, which offers greater resistance to scratching and fading. In addition to these improvements, Rolex also introduced solid bracelet center links to reduce stretch, and a glide lock extension system, which allows the wearer to increase the bracelet size up to 20 millimeters without the use of tools. In 2008, Rolex also introduced its first 18 karat white gold model, the gray gold finish was paired with an all-blue Cerachrome bezel and glossy blue dial, earning it the nickname Rolex Smurf after the cartoon character. All of these models were discontinued in 2020 following the Rolex Submariner redesign. In 2020, Rolex introduced an entire range of redesigned Rolex Submariners. The new collection was updated all at once with a 41 mm case. Despite the 1mm increase in case size, Rolex dropped the supercase and instead featured longer and slimmer lugs, thinner crown guards, and an overall look that's more similar to vintage Submariners. They also feature the new generation in-house caliber 3230 for the non-date model and 3235 for the date models. These movements result in an increased power reserve of 70 hours from 48 hours and have been updated to a precision of minus two plus two seconds per day. Popular Rolex Submariner Models Today, there's a wide range of Rolex Submariner models to suit every taste, with various materials and dial and bezel colors available. Here are the most sought after of them all. The Rolex Submariner James Bond Reference 6538. James Bond famously wore Rolex Submariner watches from 1962 until 1989. However, only one is called the James Bond watch, 
That would be the reference 6538, worn by Sean Connery in the first ever James Bond film, Dr. No. The same watch accompanied Connery in succeeding James Bond films, namely From Russia With Love in 1963, Goldfinger in 1964, and Thunderball in 1965. It's also called the Big Crown because it featured an 8mm size crown. Due to its illustrious history and the limited number of models produced, this model can fetch as high as six digits in the auction block. The Rolex Submariner Comex reference 5514. From 1970 until 1997, Rolex worked with French diving company Comex to produce diving watches for their team. Rolex produced a total of nine watches for Comex from both the Submariner and the Sea Dweller collections. These are easily recognizable with Comex text on their dials. While Rolex produced both reference 5513 and 5514 Comex models, it's the latter that's more sought after because it was produced exclusively for the French company. It is estimated that Rolex only produced 154 pieces of this model and they can fetch as high as $200,000. Rolex Submariner date models in steel and black dials, reference 16610, 116610 and 126610. Since its launch in 1953, the Submariner family has grown into many different designs and colors, but the most versatile one remains the stainless steel and black model. The most recent versions of the steel and black Rolex Submariner are the reference 16610, which has an aluminum bezel, the reference 116610, which features a serochrome bezel and a supercase, and the latest 41mm version with a serochrome bezel the reference 126610LN. These three appear very similar and are usually the top choices when choosing a stainless steel Submariner model. The aluminum bezel has a softer matte and more toolish look that vintage Rolex fans like, but the disadvantage is that it can still be scratched or dented. The first Cerachrome ceramic bezel version was unprecedented because it's impervious to scratching and fading brought about by UV rays and chemicals. The current version combines both worlds with a wider 41mm case, a serochrome bezel, but with a tapered profile that is reminiscent of vintage Rolex Submariner watches. The Rolex Submariner No Date reference 14060, 114060 and 124060. The No Date Submariner features a time-only dial, devoid of the usually present date mechanism at 3 o'clock. These are only available in stainless steel and with black dials and bezels. Collectors prize them for the symmetrical look they offer, as well as their similarity with the early Submariner models, specifically those made before 1969, when the date aperture was introduced to the sub. The most popular no-date Submariners are the modern 14060, the first no-date sub with a sapphire crystal and twin-lock crown, and the 114060, which was updated with the Cerachrome ceramic bezel and supercase. There is currently only one non-date model in the 41mm size. That's the reference 124060. Rolex Submariner Green Watches, The Kermit, Hulk and Starbucks. Green watches are all the rage these days and the Rolex Submariner was one of the first to use the unorthodox color. The very first green Rolex Submariner the reference 16610 LV Kermit was released in Baselworld 2003 to celebrate the Submariner's 50th anniversary. Rolex made small but significant tweaks to the classic steel Submariner to create this model, the most defining feature being its green aluminum bezel. Throughout its seven-year production period, there were as many as nine different versions of the Rolex Kermit released. While the Kermit introduced the green bezel to the Submariner line, the Hulk upped the ante with a matching green dial. First making an appearance in 2010, the Hulk's green color is also more prominent. Further, it was already equipped with the Cerachrome ceramic bezel and comes with a heftier supercase. The original Kermit's green and black colorway returned for the 2020 Submariner, this time with a 41mm case diameter. While the Kermit took on a bright, almost Kelly green tone, the new Starbucks Submariner has a deeper color and a more solid presence, especially when viewed from above. Not to mention, it has a Cerachrome ceramic bezel insert and a new generation caliber 3235 movement. 
All in all, the Submariner has a wide range of green models to choose from. Rolex Submariner Blue Dial Bezel Smurf Reference 116619 While the Rolex Submariner was created as a tool watch, it has evolved into a luxury sports watch with a still reliable water resistance. Ultra Luxe versions of the Sub usually come in solid gold, with the 18 karat white gold version commanding a premium. What sets the white gold Rolex Submariner apart from the other white gold Rolex models is its gray gold finish which gives it a darker appearance from typical white gold. This makes it easier to spot when placed alongside steel Rolex Submariners. But it wasn't just the precious metal of the case that got people talking. It featured a lacquered blue dial and serochrome bezel in a shade of blue never seen before on Rolex watches. This earned it the moniker Smurf among Rolex fans, based on the cartoon character. Rolex Submariner Steel Yellow Gold Blue Dial Bluesy Reference 16803, 16613, and 116613. The blue dial and bezel Rolex Submariner became popular in the 1970s, but since it was only offered in solid yellow gold versions, its price did not make it accessible to a decent number of Rolex fans. This changed in 1984 when Rolex introduced the first two-tone steel and 18 karat yellow gold Rolex Submariner reference 16803. It was offered with either a blue or black dial and matching bezel. The more affordable and understated combination of hardy stainless steel and luxurious yellow gold made blue Submariner watches available to a wider audience. And it remains one of the most popular Rolex Submariner designs today. It's an excellent middle ground for those who want a dressier dive watch for all occasion use, but find gold models too flashy. There have been several variations of the two-tone blue Submariner produced throughout the years. Regardless of the specific reference, two-tone Rolex Submariners with a blue dial and a bezel are nicknamed Bluesy. With its ruggedly handsome design, the Rolex Submariner proved to be equally at home out of the water and has since evolved into an iconic all-occasion timepiece. Which Rolex Submariner model is your favorite? Tell us in the comments section. Want to see more Ultimate Guides? Click on the upper right screen to see our Ultimate Guides playlist. Explore our collection of Rolex Submariner watches at SwissWatchExpo.com.